everyone. I'm Melissa Shakatov. And I'm Gary Sadowski. And we are so glad you guys are joining us online. This is so cool. This is very cool. But we are so glad you guys have clicked on our Channel 3 website and you're coming to check out our digs here at Channel 3. That's right. We're right here in South Burlington, Vermont. And uh, Gary, this building's actually been here since 1977. Since 1977, this is where we've been broadcasting from. Although Channel 3 actually started way back in 1954. We've mm -hmm. been on the air since then. I know. So we're, uh, we've been here quite a long time and we're so proud to be part of the Channel 3 family and we want you guys to join us too. If you've never seen the station before, you've never seen the ins and the outs and what are we doing here every day? Well, we're about to show you. So come on with us. We're going to head into the newsroom right now. So first and foremost, what grade are you guys in? Fourth and fifth. Okay, awesome. So, so have then, you guys ever been to Channel 3 before? This is your first time? First time. Awesome. Okay, well, welcome. This is obviously the lobby. This side of the building, if it seems like it's a little more quiet, uh, that's our sales and our new media area. Come on over this way. It's really cool. So right here is probably one of the more interesting spots in the newsroom. This is the weather department. Does anyone know this guy? Yes. Uh, yes. You don't know this guy? Know this Hello, guy Earthlings. <laughs> Any of you who don't know, this is Gary Sadowski. He's been on the weather team for how long? 10,000 years. 10,000 years there and he looks so dinosaurs. good. still dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, come on in. Go <laughs> follow Gary. I see the Muppet. Well, this is the weather center and this is where we try to figure out what the weather is every single day. And I started out by getting up at 2 in the morning. What are you guys doing at 2 in the morning? He's sleeping. Actually reading a book. Smart. That's what smart people do, they sleep. But I get here real early because we go on the air starting at 5 a.m. I look yeah, at a bunch of different things. But we have maps that are called computer forecast models. And they look like that. A little kid's drawing. It does look like a little I've kid's seen a little drawing. Kid draw that. That's one of them. There's another one that looks like this. Yeah, and I've seen that one. Yep. So behind it, there's a picture of the United States, and we can figure out or try to figure out what the weather is going to be like for the next 10 days. Then we've got things like this, all these numbers that mean nothing to you, but they're like code. And we can figure out what the forecast is going to be in six different cities for the next two and a half days. Just from this. Pretty cool, huh? Over here, we have the radar and the satellite. See that little thing? That shows where the clouds are and where the rain is in green and where the snow oh, is in blue. There's no above and us. there's nothing above us because we have high pressure and that brings... Yeah, that. Wait, you guys are yeah, studying yeah. weather, right? Yeah. yeah. Have you learned about high pressure? Extreme no. weather. Low pressure? No. Started. We just spared. Cold fronts? No. Warm fronts? It's a chicken. Positive vorticity advection at the 500 millibar level? This one is our main on-air computer. So all these different boxes are different things that we can show depending on what's going on. If you look up there, that's what comes out. And if I push the button, it goes to the next map. That's right. This is what you guys see on the air. And this is what I'm going to show at noon for the broadcast. These are the low temperatures this morning. That's what we're going to start with. You guys have a lot to see, and I'm going to get ready for the noon broadcast and get it all set, and then I'll see you in the studio, and then I can answer any weather questions. Do you want to see the cameras we use and stuff? Yeah! yeah. All right, come on over. This is like more of where you'll see like the producers and the reporters and the anchors be sitting, and they're mostly doing their typing and things like that over here. But if you guys were to turn around, um, this is where you see more of the editing and, and all that goes on. We have a number of editing stations to be able to piece together our news stories throughout the day. And these colorful keyboards, those help us find the commands that we need in our editing program. So as you can see, our photographers can then take the video elements and pair it with audio clips. That way it's not just chopped up materials, you're now taking a news headline and you're telling a visually impactful story to our viewers. This, this is the camera. And you're probably thinking, wow, that's not as small as my phone camera. And you're right. With batteries attached, the camera and tripod is about 45 to 50 pounds of weight. And as you can see, our cameras are built to handle just about anything. It's not just the perfect sunny days where you'll spot our cameras outside. We certainly take them outside throughout the year. And sometimes we even have to take our feet off the ground just to get the shots that we need to tell you those stories. 
on the back of this camera, you'll see memory cards. Well, without these, let's just say you have no stored footage and now you have nothing to use as video. So this is one of the lights that comes with, you know, comes on the camera. And that helps brighten up those faces of the people that we're interviewing. As you can see, it's pretty bright. Definitely kind of hard to stare at, but we do promise the quality of the footage ends up looking so much better once those lights are turned on. And there are a lot of different gadgets you'll find on these cameras. Buttons like the zoom button here. The cameras are also connected to microphones so that we can hear the people we're interviewing loud and clear. Now let's head upstairs. This is our production team. It's made up of directors, audio operators, and our master control operators. They make sure our live broadcasts look good on air. What's your question? How much time are they limited to to make sure that we're that the reporters look good? These guys actually work on our evening broadcasts. You can see they came in really early. They're here before noon and they've got about five, six hours to get everything together for our five and six o'clock at night. We call this the bridge. It's basically a control room where you're gonna see a whole lot of screens and our directors have eyes on all of them. You can see different shots set up in the studio, out in the field. You can even see regular programming, which is what you're seeing on your TVs at home. Not all of this stuff behind the scenes. They're basically running the show from up here and they're in touch with the producer. So hours before the show, producers will create what's called a rundown. They fill it with stories and work with on-air talent to write all those stories out and figure out what should actually be on the screen that you're watching at home. So once the producer figures all of that out, he or she will then be in touch with our directors to make sure the graphics are all correct, they pick which camera shots to use, the transitions during the show, and basically all of the creative stuff that we need to make the show look good. Do you guys want to go downstairs into the studio? Yeah, yeah let's go check out the studio. Well, if we're going to go to the studio, I should probably find Gary. Hey, Gare. Hey there. How's it going? <laughs> but I was just about to head downstairs. Do you want to tell everyone about our new studio? Oh, yeah, the state-of-the-art multi-set studio. Sure, we've seen some big changes here. This studio is 2,500 square feet. That's one of the largest news studios in all of New England. You'll see a lot of wiring, lighting, TV monitors, and, of course, sets. Well, I just want to show you how this all the sets are kind of separated but they look like they're all connected on tv so like this is our across the fence set we have a kitchen set an interview set for live guests and then there's a handful of news weather and sports related sets but Gary, it really didn't look like this the whole time, right? No, oh, that's for sure. We've come a long way. In fact, even our robotic cameras replaced the manual ones in the early 2000s. Even the way we used to put sets together looks very different than what we have out there now. We got this new studio built in 2017, made up of hundreds of pieces, including 120 lights and about a mile of cords and cables. Every um, anchor has to have a microphone on and then what's called an IFB box. With the click of a button, these microphones allow us to sound nice and clear on the air and be able to talk to our producers and directors during the show. And that wire in my ear, that's what connects to what is called an IFB box. Basically, that just allows me to hear my producer and director, and I can listen to the whole show while it's going on live. Don't worry, Gary needs all of this stuff too. And once news anchors write their scripts, do their makeup and hair, it's showtime. And as far as the scripts go, we have a certain amount of time to write and stylize all of our scripts before we finally go to air. Thank you for choosing Channel 3 at noon. I'm Melissa Sheketoff. For example, I need about an hour and a half to write all of my work for the morning show. And Gary definitely needs time to put his forecast and his graphics together. Now, I wish I could say that we are wizards and can memorize everything we're putting together, but that is just not the truth. We have what's called a teleprompter operator. As you can see, he scrolls through our scripts so that they come up on our cameras and I'm able to read them, but you at home would never know that we're reading off of the cameras. All you see is what's on your screen. I think the most popular question that we get, Gare, is how does the green screen work? That's right. I do all my forecasts in front of that green screen. It's called a chroma key wall, and it's green. And the way it works is our studio cameras see basically three colors. There's red, there's green, and there's blue. So what you can do is upstairs in the control room, you can erase basically the green color. It only sees red and blue. Either side of the green screen, there's a TV monitor. 
computer. So I'm basically just watching myself on TV and I can see where my arm is and where the uh, numbers are that I'm supposed to be pointing to on the weather map and away you go. It takes some practice to get that to the point where you can point right at what you want to point to, but that comes with practice. So there you go, that's how it works. Now if you have any questions, feel free to contact us anytime, send us an email, and we'll answer your questions for you. Just either email us, like Gary said, at news at WCAX.com, or you can check us out on Facebook, and you can ask us uh, questions there and message us right there too. So any way you want to send it to us, we will be here, and we can't wait to hear from all of you guys. Thank you for clicking on this. We'll see you again real soon. Have a great day. Have a good time. <laughs>